mean, you ain't showing up unless you need to work. So that's right. So get to work and then hit him up and then get to work again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here we go. The Perpetual Habitat Podcast. Yo, 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 what is up, everybody? Welcome to the Natural Habitat Podcast. My name is Mikey Booya. My name is Darth Marvel. Darth Marvel. Yeah, it's, a, it's a great name, my friend. We've done uh, uh, we've done how many episodes now? Two hundred thirty episodes. Yeah. Never, never knew your name until now. That's a good one, Darth Marvel. That's the one. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, first of all, I would like to come out the gate with thanks and appreciation for everybody out there that's listening, everybody out there that supports us, uh, that shares the shows, tells their friends. Uh, you know, it's 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 dope that we've been doing this for so long. And, uh, you know, we have this actual, like, grassroots following that we're growing instead of just, you know, come and go fans. That's the one thing that I love about podcasts is that when you get people that listen to your podcast, they become connected to the podcast. It's like these people were in the conversation with us as opposed to someone that comes through and checks it out and moves on to the next thing. It gets a, It's a more intimate thing, you know what I mean? So with that intimacy in mind, I just wanted to say... We love you. Yeah, I agree. Intimately. Um, we yeah. in, we intimately love all of you. And right now yeah. I'm kissing the nape of your neck. And Intimate. I got I got rock hard boner. So Intimate. All in your earlobe. Mm-hmm. Um also, second thing out the gate. Yeah. <laughs> Gonna have to clear my throat for this one. <laughs> I'm ready. Right. Uh I would like to give a nice uh official Natural Habitat, welcome to our brand new executives. Got sent over from the big ups. Uh, oh, yeah? Yeah. I, did you meet them this morning? No. I, met, I, I, haven't, I haven't been here until now. I met them in the break room, and these are uh, these are some old school, like, like Rod and Todd, like, cool style executives. They weren't like Pat and Nat at all. Rest in peace. Um, these two guys, uh, their names were Brant and Grant. They're very nice twin brothers, and nice. uh, they both look exactly the same. And they do the thing where where they'll wear the same clothes, but there's always one piece that's like a different color. You know what I mean? Is it mandatory that we always have like two people? Is I don't that know. like a stipulation in the contract? Whenever like we're looking for new executives, it says it has to be more than one person. Uh, I haven't read any of that, any of that stuff, any of the executive contracts. That's kind of like uh, above the level that I'm at at the show. I'm kind of an entry level guy, so I don't really know a lot. But I know that uh, I, I know that two two heads are better than one. That's a classic saying. So it only makes sense that you would have, you know, two people to do the work that we do. We got two people here on the show, so uh, yeah. I don't know why it always seems like they come in pairs and they seem to be, uh, it's okay. Um, Joey, let me talk to you real quick over here. If you don't mind. Uh, I don't, I don't want to like make fun of them or like be insensitive. I'm sure they get this all the time, but it seems like every executive we get their names like rhyme, right? Yeah. I don't know. It's like a thing. I haven't noticed that until just now. How many, (laughs) how many executives have we gone through with rhyming names? Every single one, right? I don't know, I guess. I want to say all of them. I didn't even think about it. Yeah? Uh, well, I don't know. Maybe What's their names? Brant and Grant? Brant and Grant, yeah. And and they're twins. So let's just, let's just not... I Have guess, you seen them? I guess we just won't mention the fact that it rhymes. You know what I mean? Like, we'll just kind of go along with how we've been doing. All right, let's go. Yeah, so uh, Brant Grant, they're the new executives, and um, you know I think that everything's gonna be great because I met him in the break room today. They had uh, they had some donuts, and they also had a bunch of uh, little samples of uh, different types of weed strains, 
And Did they have a favorite superhero character for the throwback? Uh, you know, I didn't really ask them about that because I didn't know that that's what we were doing until just now. Like I said, entry level guy here, but um, I could ask them. You know what I mean? Yeah. When when we're done, wherever I find them, I'm sure they got some input. But uh, as you said, throwback today is Thursday. Throwback Thursday, and we figured that in uh, in spirit of Artie, the strongest man in the world. In the world. Mm-hmm. We had a uh, we we had some strange realizations about him the other day, so we figured that we would talk about uh, the history of superheroes. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I mean, like, there's so many that that um you wouldn't even like categorize as a superhero at first. So I I think that this is gonna be good. You know, like there's a there's a lot like already I think that it overlooked. Because um, people forgot that yeah. to relate them as a superhero or whatnot. Yeah, this uh, this first one that's coming up on the list of live action superheroes, um, the Lone Ranger. I don't even think about that. I don't even think that the Lone Ranger was a superhero. I didn't even make the connection. So yeah, and you know, that's same probably... same with Artie. Also, it's like you know, out of sight, out of mind. You just don't think about it. Yeah. So we're gonna have a whole, a whole heap man. Whole heap man. So uh, whole heap man. So I was thinking about it, and I was like, when did this whole thing happen? When did this whole thing start? The whole superhero boom. And from what I understand, it's all traced back to Superman, and that is why he is, I assume, one of the top heroes. The original guy a lot of people are into superman a lot of people have the tattoo in the car seat covers so uh in 1933 was the debut of superman did you find anything earlier than that um no i didn't even really look oh sweet <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i i see a lot that are old but i didn't really look at like the year i just know that Ever since they did pop up, they've just kind of never gone away. It's like their superheroes are like one of the very rare things that once you start them, they just don't stop. You know what I'm saying? It's like Pringles. <laughs> superheroes are like Pringles. Yeah, once you pop, fun don't stop. Yeah, I feel you. I feel what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, because like you know, for for whatever reason, whatever revivals, whatever, whatever, comic books. To TV shows, to movies, to to whatever you know, it's, they're everywhere and have never really gone away. And it's and it's because it's like I don't know, it's because it's like half fantasy, you know, yeah, half, and then half um, things that are unrelatable that you know things that you wish were attributes about yourself like yeah being exactly. stronger or having like some type of like moral dilemma or whatever you know being faster or what you know whatever the fucking thing is doing good versus doing evil you know whatever yeah. there's a million things i think that i think that uh the idea of the superhero has been around a lot longer than the superhero and that it just got named in you know, the early 1900s. But like you said, I think that a lot of it is related to people and people, you know, like everybody has shortcomings as, you know, like everybody has their own things that they deal with, their own strengths and weaknesses. And then everybody has universal weaknesses as people. Like we can't lift up too much. We can't live forever. Like all these, we can't breathe underwater. We can't walk can't through walls, fly. but yeah, can't fly. So all of these things are shit that people have probably wanted forever. Like, you know, I imagine that one of the first men that was walking around on Earth in some sort of leaf loincloth looked up at a bird and had some sort of thought like, wow, what would it be like to be able to be up there where that bird is and to be able to fly? And that's just been progressing ever since, you know? Yeah, I agree. So I think it's been in us forever that want to be better at you know just stronger just a better person like you were saying 
And I think uh, I think it's a lot more relatable than people think. There's like, yeah, there's yeah. like a there's so a deeper like, thing to it. We just all have these inherent wants and needs to like to do the right thing. It makes you feel good to fucking want to be like helping people or like or like whatever, you know. And it's because of human nature that you know um, no good deed is done like with always like the best intentions you know what i'm saying like it, it everything is greedy everything is selfish so like people do things good because they want a pat on the back there's a reward you know there there isn't for doing bad shit yeah there's just like you get in trouble yeah you know there's consequence so like yeah it's it's easy to fucking want to go where the reward is you know and that's just like a fuck it's always going to be a part of human nature so like we don't a lot of people don't realize that and make more of like the dramatic side about like you know the good versus evil and really it's more of like an internal moral self dilemma and i think i think that's why i personally and a lot of people uh relate to batman because batman is that like that mix of good and evil battling each other light and darkness and he's like he tries to be a good person, but his soul is tormented, and it's like that whole back and forth thing. So, it makes it more. Plus, he doesn't have any superpowers, so it makes it even more relatable. My soul is tormented right now. I'm drinking out of this coffee cup that doesn't say natural habitat, <laughs> and I and I feel really guilty. And I sit here and I think to myself, I'm wondering if anybody out there is listening would like to have their own natural habitat coffee cup. Damn, is this a commercial? No. <laughs> then my, uh, super, my super intellectual powers. You know, what, you, you know what I would say with my super smarts is that you should go to naturalhabitatpodcast.com slash shop and get yourself one of them mugs because they're up there. Are they? Yeah, and they're sweet looking. Damn, I need to get one then. Uh, I, I know that Pat and Nat... Um, before they unfortunately passed, they hand painted us mugs and gave them to us, and they had the logo and everything on, and they had your name. And for some reason, you don't ever use it. It's just kind of sitting behind you. I see it. So I don't know why you're not I, using that one. I never heard of it. <laughs> well, now you have. So there it is. My name huh? changes every week, so that could have been anybody's cup. Yeah, I guess you're right. It did say, I think it's, what's it say on it? Motherfucking flame emoji? I don't know. I think that's what it says. That's some weird shit. Yeah, something like that. You're, what's your name today? I forgot. Um, I don't remember. Yeah, <laughs> neither do I. But uh, I think it's about Austin time. I think about. I think it's about time we take a break. All right, dab it up. Mm-hmm. Okay, who are you? Uh, the milkman. Do you have a sidekick? No. A nemesis? A what? A bad guy. I'm a people person. Have you been fighting crime long? I don't fight crime. What do you fight? Osteoporosis. A never-ending supply of milk. And chocolate milk. <coughs> Want strong bones? Calcium may help prevent osteoporosis. <coughs> drink your damn <coughs> milk, hose. Oh, yeah? Yeah, drink your milk, hose. <coughs> <laughs> so, uh, <coughs> I was listening to, um, I was listening to this podcast. Whose podcast? It was, uh, it's Tom Segura and Christina Pazinski's podcast. It's called Your Mom's House. Have you ever heard of it? No, I don't listen to other podcasts. Never heard of it. Well, um, it's a, it's a, it's a very funny podcast. And I was listening to it. And they were trying to play a video on YouTube and a fucking, uh, a red lobster commercial played. It was like, do you want some Alaskan crab? And then he like muted it real quick and he was like, fucking ads. And it was this whole giant thing. It made me feel better for all the times that I played ads. Nice. I was like, not bad. Cause I almost just did it again. Oh yeah. Mm hmm. Smooth maneuver, bro. It's kind of what I do. Yeah. So, uh, so I have like my, superhero knowledge goes like batman and then that's about it so i know a lot of other things and uh 
you know, I'm aware of all of these different universes, but I don't really get that deep into them as much as I get into Batman. So, like, I, I, I'd say second runner-up would probably be uh, the X-Men. The X-Men was a big thing in my childhood. I'm going to have to agree. And I remember the arcade game. Do you remember the fucking X-Men arcade game? Yeah. How dope was that shit? It was like fucking, the, it was like six players. I think the cartoon TV show was really genesis for that shit. Yeah. Because uh, it spawned the fucking trading cards, which everybody had. It fucking spawned a lot of action figures, which everybody had. It was fucking, nobody wanted to give up their X-Men toys. You know what I'm saying? Nobody even wanted to let you play with their toys. You had to go buy your own. And it was like a very like collectible thing. One of the few that kids actually like gave a shit about. Yeah. You know, from my memories, you know. And uh, I really liked that connection between... The, it was like... Um, it was kind of like the turtles all over again. You know, when I was really little, I had the turtles. Yeah. X-Men, X-Men was around like... Way later, when we were a little older, what like? Yeah, it was definitely it was definitely a '90s thing. Yeah. So, yeah, so it was like that same type of feel, you know. It had all the merchandise, it had all the shit to go with it, and uh, it was pretty, pretty right on point. Let's see. The first appearance of the X Men in the comic book was 1963, and, and then. Uh, Let's see. It looks like they revised in 1991. They revised the entire lineup of like the X Men book series, and then launched a whole new series simply titled X Men. And I think that's the one that we got when we were growing up. It's the new rebranded X Men. They put a bunch of time and money into making it all new and polished and shiny, and then fucking shoved it down our throats. And we ate it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. X-Men were dope, dude. <laughs> yeah, I think it had cool stories. Everybody had, like, they were together as a team, but everybody had an individual story. And that, and they were, like, their own, they were, like, their own Avengers or something. And the, the cool thing about X-Men also was that it was really unlimited. There was no, like, end in sight. Like, if you could think of a new mutated character, you could make it. Yeah. Because it was basically like a never-ending fucking pool of like a place to spawn new creations and new thoughts and ideas. Yeah. Ult- ultimately, it was pretty seem seem like endless, you know. And now it's kind of they're kind of like taking a different turn with it. But back then, it seemed like there was no end in sight. Yeah, it definitely seemed like it was just fucking on and on. There was a mutant for everybody. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's exactly what I mean is that, you know, everybody had one that they liked. There were so many, so many different ones that everybody could have one. Mm-hmm. Not just like, yeah. you had to fight over them. Just made it even more relatable. Yeah. And uh, we were talking about this the other day, like with the Lone Ranger, and then there's Zorro. And then, uh, you know, Robin, the Green Hornet, these are all people that disguise their true identities of themselves from supervillains and police commissioners and all these different people simply by wearing a cloth band with eye holes in it that's about two inches wide. And they put it over their face and they still have the same hair, same like jaw structure, and nobody knows who the fuck they are. So you were talking about ad- adapting one of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I Yeah. I th- I always thought like that always it didn't bug me, but I always noticed it. I always was like, what the fuck, man? Like why are you just going to how are you just going to fucking put on a little tiny thin mask and then nobody knows who you are? Because in comic book universe, you know, it wasn't important People always looked past it for the greater good, you know. People didn't care who the identity was because he served a purpose. He was there to save the day. It didn't really matter who it was. Yeah, and you're right. And you could only, I mean, like, you only draw, especially if you have a certain type of drawing style, 
you only draw so many different types of faces and eyes and shit. So it's easy to put a mask on someone in a comic book and then make them, you can't really tell who they are. Like they could even make the reader not know who it is until they get to the end and then they reveal it. And you're like, oh yeah, I guess it totally is them. So I didn't even think of that. Yeah. You fucking did it. You blew my mind. And why, you know, I don't know. You got to think about like, if you're going to become a superhero and you're going to put your life on the line, how would you do it? If you're going to like make this a thing where like, say you were going to become Booyah Man for just the sake of the show. You're going to become Booyah Man and you're going to fucking have like whatever special power you pick, right? What is it? Uh, my special power is gonna be, uh, super, no, eyes controlling time. Super eyes controlling time. Okay, you got it. All right. And then, <laughs> so Booyah Man comes with super eyes controlling time, and then he, like, does crazy stuff with time travel or whatever, you know? And then, and, and then, I don't know. So, like, you, you have to choose, okay, like, this is gonna be, this is gonna be you. This is what you're gonna have to do for the rest of your life. How you, how are you gonna do it to where you could still live your life? You're gonna create a fucking, Alter ego, you're gonna like, you know, you're gonna try to like make up some type of way for you to stay anonymous. Yeah. That way you could still live because you can't just like, you can't just jump into it. Responsibility is a motherfucker. So like you feel guilt and you feel like you have to do it because you have these powers or whatever. But at the same time, you feel like, but what about me though? You know, like when, when do I just get to be me? Yeah. You know, no, nobody else is out there fucking saving my life. Working my job and shit. And another, Nobody, another, know? another thing that you give up becoming a superhero is, uh, is freedom of tattoos. You can't really get a lot of tattoos because, you know, what if your suit gets ripped a little bit and then it, and then it reveals your tattoo that people know that you have in real life? You know, then is it, you can't have anything identifying. None of that shit. No, like, uh, no cool hair. Or like, uh, or funky glasses that you wear all the time or anything like that. Right. None of that. You can't express yourself at all. You gotta like blend in, just be a regular, regular guy. Since you got that job to do, you got that responsibility. Yeah, you got the whole world on your shoulders. And, uh, and Gotham doesn't, uh, Gotham needs the hero that it deserves or something like that. Whatever the fuck he said at the end of the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So yeah, and, th- and that's always been like the dilemma, you know? That's always been, if you listen to Stan Lee tell it. You know, it's always like with great power comes great responsibility, you know, and you just feel it naturally. You have to take on that role. If you have it, nobody else has it. What is the what is the best thing to do is to fucking share it with everybody or to keep it all to yourself. You know what I'm saying? And it's like it's not even a hard question. Yeah, it isn't. Yeah. And 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 that's and everybody has that want or that need to do good. Everybody is selfish also. So like that's what makes it such a great dilemma. <laughs> and like you it's like it like, it's like, a never ending thing that we could just do forever, you know, we could create like these type of characters and, and they'll always have like something to embody or embrace. Yeah. And like you said, uh it's like people naturally go towards the reward. Yeah. And how if you do something good there's all these different re- different rewards, like people, you know, look up to you. Everybody has these, like, certain, everyone's like, oh, they're fucking so awesome. They fucking did this, did that, instead of, like, who the fuck is this weirdo? And all of these different, you know, rewards that you get, it's like, uh, it's primal shit. Like how, uh, I forget the experiment, but they did some sort of, like, weird monkey experiment that the monkeys would, like, subdue, like, themselves to it wasn't like torture but like some uncomfortable shit just for the reward because if they did something they could do something else and get nothing or they could do something that they didn't like and get a reward and they did something that they didn't like every single time yeah. because they knew that there was a reward at the end of it so it's yeah, like in- incentives are a motherfucker you know and and that could be used for good or evil also yeah you know it's like Blackmail, blackmail is definitely an incentive, and that's and I mean that's a whole nother that's a whole nother day when we do the super villains episode, yeah, and that's a whole nother shit. But um, yeah. so I think that uh, a lot of 
a lot of the superhero shit was done in comic books. That was the spawn of it. That's when it all started. And then the first animated superhero that I found, which I actually remember from my childhood for some reason, even though it was from the 50s, was Mighty Mouse. Mighty yeah. Mouse's Playhouse was the first thing. I used to watch that shit as a kid. My great grandparents would make me watch that. All those, all those era cartoons. Mighty Mouse was definitely one. Speedy Gonzalez, all those. Yeah, fucking, you know all the really old ones. Yeah, my uh, my grandma had fucking in her giant VHS cabinet. She had uh, she had one like a little cartoon section. I remember there was one that was Mighty Mouse, and I would watch it all the time when I went over there. So I was uh. It's dope that like that there's certain things that are before your time, but you still get subjected to in all different genres of shit. Just people that are in your life, whether it's grandparents or uncles or your parents or, you know, anybody, just somebody older. They're like, hey, check this shit out. You don't know nothing about this. And you're just like, whoa. And nobody else like nobody else knows about it. Like all the other kids in school aren't running around talking about how cool Mighty Mouse is. That's just something that, like, you saw, like, in this, like, memory that we'll never forget. Like, I'll never forget, like, finding that VHS and, like, putting it in. And, like, you'll never forget going over to your great-grandma's and watching that when you were a kid just yourself. Like, it's not like it's a memory with a bunch of people or a concert yeah, or a fight that happened. Personal. It's you sitting down yeah. in front of a TV. Like, yeah. it's crazy, man. Yep, yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. um, let's go over some unknown facts. Well, we got time. All right, cool. Uh, I, like I said before, <clears throat> love my Batman shit, so I got some facts about Batman that some people might not know. Oh, yeah? Yeah. First of all, did you know that, well, everybody knows that Batman's notorious for not killing anybody. That's like his thing, that he doesn't kill any bad guys. He always, like, just kind of leaves them knocked out or dangling somewhere from a rope for the cops to, poop, like, clean up later, but... Back in, uh, back in like the 30s to the 50s, he used to kill people all the fucking time. Like constantly, he would throw people off rooftops and fucking dump them into like vats of acid and shit. And he was super brutal. And then they kind of like rebranded him after a while and turned him into what he is now. Yeah. So that's dope. That's, that's mine. Crazy. You got a fact about someone else? Um, you know, I got one about. You gonna learn us something? Oh, yeah? Yeah. What it is. In 1996, Marvel and DC created Amalgam Comics that joined their two universes together. And they ended up making crazy characters, like hybrid characters. And one of them was Batman Wolverine. Damn. That's dope. Yeah. Yeah, so that's pretty neat. Fuck yeah! I didn't. I didn't know that the two fucking ever worked together like that. Yeah, That's me pretty, neither. Pretty cool. I know that. Um, I know that Batman. When when World War Two happened, it became a big thing for superheroes to like fight Nazis. Every comic book was like, "We got the Nazis now, and we're gonna fuck them up," and like all this shit, because that's what everybody loved. And uh, Batman, actually, they like stayed away from it. And he only met Hitler once. And it wasn't even in a comic. It was on the cover of a comic. So it was on the cover. But then once you read the comic, Hitler wasn't even really there. And it was just a couple Nazis. Everything was cool. But uh that was the only time that they did it. Everybody else saturated it. And they just did it once on the cover. Nice. One time real big. And then um there's a long-standing uh, rumor that Batman and Robin are gay, secretly gay. They've been called the ambiguously gay duo. I remember they used to do that shit on Saturday Night Live. You remember that? <laughs> Fucking, uh, like the animated <laughs> shorts. Yeah, that shit was dope. Um, that was Andy Samberg, I'm pretty sure. He's done, like, all the digital shorts. That's funny. And fucking, uh, so... There's all these rumors that Batman and Robin are gay and that they had, like, fucked at one point. That maybe it was, like, suggested in a couple comic books. But all the universes are different. Different shit happens. But I found out that there was... There was this one guy 
back in the day that uh, his name was Dr. Frederick Wortham. And he uh, was hell-bent on destroying the comic book industry. I don't know why. I don't know what his beef was. But he wanted to stop it. And he formed the Comics Code, which I actually read something about this, and I'm going to look it up right now. But uh, <clears throat> his big thing was that he was a therapist and that a lot of people would come in and say that they had uh, a lot of sexually maladjusted individuals would visit him who read Batman comics and expressed romantic feelings towards Batman. So this is what he claimed. And then he claimed that it was because Batman and Robin were gay and it was like some sort of like uh like homosexual like like mind control and it would like turn you gay if you read it. Hmm. And that stuck around all the way until now. So Batman's gay and he turns everybody gay. No, Batman's not gay, Robin's gay. And what it is is that Robin was Robin just wouldn't stop. He wouldn't stop and Batman was like, Look, we're gonna do this, but I'm in charge and I'm not sucking your dick. And he was like, Cool. And then that's what happened. They did it one time. That doesn't mean he's gay. All right. <laughs> I don't know, bro. Doesn't mean he's gay. I don't know, bro. Uh, All right. I heard a rumor that Darth Vader was inspired by Marvel's Doctor Doom. Really? Yeah, and they got these two action figures standing next to each other, and I could kind of see a resemblance. Hmm. Let's see. Doctor Doom seems like a older character, like one of the originals. I'm sure it was definitely around yeah. when George Lucas was a kid. All right, yeah. I see this picture right here, and it totally does. Mm -hmm. They totally do have the same kind of thing going on with, like, the fucking, like, same belt. Force choke. Force choke, belt, cape, the helmet instead of the hood, mask. the yeah. mask. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah. Yeah. I know that uh, I've always been into... Uh, I've been in, into MF Doom, like, for years. <clears throat> I remember that was one of the first, like, instrumental albums that I picked up was one of his special herbs, the Metal Fingers one. And for people that haven't heard of him, he's, like, kind of underground... But for people that haven't heard about him, younger cats, older cats, he uh, he does the whole MF Doom, like the the whole gimmick with the mask and the gloves and shit, never takes his mask off. And he has now recently, but for a long time, it was like no pictures without the mask, no appearances without the mask. He fucking would go grocery shopping in his mask. Like he was just always wearing his mask. And that was his gimmick. Yeah. Secretly, he was also another rapper. He was. Who was he? I can't remember. I neither can I. <laughs> but, but I know yeah, he was. He was. He was multiple rappers. He's more than just two. I think yeah. Also. And I know that he also did a thing where uh, where he sent a bunch of people that all like performed as him in MF Doom masks, and he did like three shows at the same time. That's dope. At in three different states. It was like, come to the MF Doom show. Which one's the real MF Doom? Nobody knows. <laughs> it's like, what the Dude, fuck? Venom yeah. w was a fan drawing. And they bought it for $220. Damn, for real? And made him a sick-ass character. <laughs> what the fuck? Damn, that's fucked up. $220. Two hundred twenty dollars. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. I'm sure the dude was juiced, right? And now he's got like the claim to fame, like, oh, I created Venom. But you know, he yeah. got hosed. <laughs> yeah, he got hosed for Man, sure. Man, that's fucked up. Yeah, but fuck, that's a dope character, though, right? That was always a good one. All right. Um, yeah, it definitely was. I didn't even. I didn't even know. Like, I wouldn't even have guessed that it was just submitted by a fan. And it would have yeah. turned into, like, the second biggest thing in the Spider-Man universe. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> but uh, I looked up this comic code authority that this fucking douchebag started. 
and um, they actually abolished it or abandoned it, they say, in 2001. And what it was is that they put up all these rules for what you could and couldn't put in a comic book. And I think that you could make it, but you wouldn't be able to get CCA certified and then get your books sold in like comic book stores and shit. And uh, the main thing was that it prohibited presentation of policemen, judges, government officials, and respected institutions in such a way to create disrespect for established authority. And uh, it added requirements that in every instance, good shall triumph over evil and discourage instances of law enforcement officers dying as a result of criminals' activities. Uh, no excessive violence, no uh, unsavory, gruesome illustrations, no vampires, no werewolves, no zombies. <laughs> like, all of this shit were actual rules up until, uh, let's see, I don't know, uh, up until like the early 2000s when they finally ab abandoned it and people really weren't paying attention to the rules anymore. But, this was an actual thing that this guy started. And it was like, I don't want this to be like this. And he fucking changed everything. Well, I had to stop way before that because. Yeah, um, a, lot, a lot of the fucking crazy shit was coming out back in the yeah. 80s and 90s. So check this out. Like Lady Death. Remember that? From 1975 to 1996, Marvel had trademarked the word zombies. Damn. But I guess it like, for whatever reason... There's ways around it. So in 96, they re-registered as Marvel Zombies, and the cover is fucking uh, Wolverine turned into a zombie. And it's pretty naughty. And it's pretty dope. Those sneaky bastards. I know. So they got the lock on zombies. And then um, also Eminem is a fucking character in the Marvel Universe. What? Really? Yeah. <laughs> he, he, there's a cover of It's Eminem and the Punisher. No way. Yeah, and his he has his own character in the Marvel Universe as himself. What a fucking guy. Damn. That's crazy. That's so, that's so dope. Yeah. That shit right? gets deep. That's how deep the shit so gets. So dope. So, um, so, yeah, fucking the, the dope thing about it is that everybody has their own favorite and everybody has their own shit that they gravitate towards. So we want to we wanna hear yours. Who's your favorite superhero? It could be Superman. It could be Batman. That's fine. Mine's Batman. So it could be one that everybody goes towards. That's why everybody goes towards them because they're dope. But, uh, you know, a lot of people have outside the box shit. Shit that people wouldn't think of. Um, one of my, I'd say my second favorite superhero, if you could call him a superhero, would be, no, maybe he's a supervillain. I'd take it back. Never mind. Batman for the win. So, uh, if you're on SoundCloud, leave a comment on SoundCloud. Um, if you're on iTunes, leave a comment on iTunes. If you're on Facebook, join our group. Let us know. Email us. Yeah. Write us. What's your favorite? We're taking a poll. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We just started uploading all the old episodes. We're going to keep doing that every week until we catch up to the most recent ones. Yeah, and, actually, uh, comment on there. Yeah, comment on there. Get us get us going. Hop us out. Subscribe, comment, do all that shit. Do it. All right. Let's uh, leave them with some wisdom from Stanley on the way out. All right. Here it is. Peace, bitches. Thor versus Hulk. Oh, wow. Who really wins? You know, whenever two superheroes fight, we usually... When you have two of your own big characters, you try to make it end in a draw so that the readers can spend the rest of their lives arguing, well, I think he won, no, I think he won. And that keeps the interest going and that gets me off the hook. There's something really nice about being as old as we are and still being able to get a little, like a little kid. Stan Lee still has the power 
to invoking you that same childlike reaction uh, that you had, a sense of wonder for Spider-Man's dad. This is Spider-Man's dad. This is the Hulk's dad. This is Iron Man's dad. I don't know if you guys could tell when I told you. I was pretty excited when I broke well, the I news. I could tell. You were wearing sweatpants. <laughs> <laughs> What about Spider-Man? Wait a second, I don't get to answer any, I don't no, get no, to no, ask no, any no. questions. You have to be annoyed by being asked nonstop comic nonsense. So here's a real question. I'm unlucky in love. What would you do if you were me? You look like one of the most well-adjusted guys here. You're happy, you're calm, you're content, you do what you want to do. Stan Why make any changes? Stan needs to get his prescription checked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting up here with Stan. All of a sudden, I'm sharing the counter with Stan. All they do, do is like put that? me down all the with time. With a guy for my bigger choice. than me. They put me down for my choices all the time, and you're here to tell me, like, I'm on the right track. But going back to Spider-Man, one of the most heartbreaking, gut-wrenching, but yet fantastic storylines was Captain Stacy's death. What were your thoughts on those monumental events in Spider-Man's life? The death of Captain Stacy was something I thought the readers wouldn't expect, but it was the type of thing that could happen in real life. But what I liked best about it was the very end, when Captain Stacy was dying and Spider-Man was there with him trying to save him, but he couldn't save him. And Captain Stacy looked up at Spider-Man and with his dying breath, oh. he said something like, Take good care of her, oh, yeah. Peter. And Peter knew that Stacy had always known who he was. To me, that was one of the most dramatic panels in comics. I love that. Or in anywhere, really. I thought that was good. Living legends is a term that's thrown around uh, an awful lot and thrown around probably in the wrong direction. I reserve the term for people that really deserve it. And Stan Lee is to me the, the modern day uh, Mark Twain, the Samuel Clemens of comics, if you will, the Will Rogers of four color. This man has been the ambassador for the comic book community almost since its inception and still remains today a tireless crusader for everything comics related. And react. That's cool. awesome. Hey. All right, guys. Thank Stan. you, guys. It was Thank great you. meeting you. Thank really you. a pleasure. Hey, you can't stay a little longer? No, I, no, I no, ordered a pizza. Sean, I got soda pop coming. Enjoy the pizza. Enjoy the soda pop. I have a I thousand more go. questions. Let me, I have to, let me get take back care of this, <laughs> Mr. Lee. I have to get back in the real world. Come it come was on, a pleasure. See you guys. Bye, Stan. Love you all. It was a great time. I love you too. Thank you. Okay. Oh, you always Thank you. Bye, Stan. Bye. 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 Hey. Stan Lee. <laughs> Natural Habitat Recording.